Alright, good morning. It's uh, Saturday morning about 6 o'clock. Hit the rack about 10.15 last night. Worn out, tired, fun night though. Fun day, great hike. Had an excellent time with Chris. Pretty lucky man, incredible hiking partners I have. It's coffee time. Good morning, America. Time to get some coffee. We're up. We're moving. This is over there putting his pant legs on. I'm rocking in the hammock. What I'm looking at while I rock in the hand. Alright, good morning. It's 20 minutes to 20 minutes to 8. We're uh, heading out of camp, heading to West Canada Creek. It's about five miles away. Slept like a baby last night. Loon sang all night long, full moon, fun night. Chris, any words of wisdom? Uh, yeah. Alright. <laughs> Chris needs to get going in the morning. <laughs> One thing we wanted to share is for those people that are thinking about going out and hiking the trail is think about how much water you really want to carry on your back. There's just an abundance of water all throughout the trail. You can't walk more than about two miles probably without coming by another water source that you could filter water. Um, I find for myself that I limit it. You know, I carry about 40 ounces. I know that a lot of people carry the big hydration bladders and, and whatnot. There's nothing wrong with those, but you know, with water being as heavy to, as it is, you just may want to consider not carrying a full hydration bladder because you're going to walk by an awful lot of water you wouldn't have to carry. This is the reason that, in my opinion, planning on 10 to 11, maybe 12 miles a day when hiking the trail is the way to go. Not only is there a lot of ups and downs, the trail is a bit difficult, but you're going to want to get to spots like this and you're going to want to spend some time. Woo! Unbelievable. Life is good!
All right, coming off of this little three uh, log bridge, it can be a little bit deceiving where to go next. So let me turn around and show you guys how to uh, stay on the trail and keep on moving. It's like a set of stairs right here. And then it just loops right back around on top of the other side of the waterfall, the big waterfall. Last time I was on this section was Memorial Day 2013 with uh, Whoopsie. And this was a tough section. Um, a lot of blowdowns, stuff across the trail. It was uh, a really exceptionally wet spring. I just want to uh, send a heartfelt thanks to the trail stewards and all the volunteers who worked on this section. I don't recognize it. It is absolutely in terrific shape this is an enjoyable section right now we're almost to the west canada lake section we haven't had to go over but about one blowdown guys i truly appreciate it. you guys did a great job this was a mess um, i can see all the places where you had to cut and and get the job done so thank you very much well done you uh you make it easy on an old guy like me walking through the woods this is an example of some of the sections you've got to kind of rock hop which is one of the reasons you really want to try and take care of your feet after the West Canada Creek lean-to is this primitive camping spot with its own very nice fire ring. And there's this rock smack dab in the middle of the trail. The trail continues straight ahead on the way to Cedar Lake. If you hang a left and you go down this trail, you will head to West Candle Lake number one. Interesting story about West Candle Lake number one. My boy Gray Gorilla wanted to hike a 20 mile day and this would have put him in a 20 mile day. And he went by that rock didn't see this turn off. 
How far did you end up going that day, Gorilla? 25 and a half. How many do you wish you would have gone? <laughs> Not that far. <laughs> <laughs> so, so. Take what? my advice, you better turn here because the next one, and then the next one, you'll end up walking too far. <laughs> West Canada Lake One, my buddy Two Ton Tony uh, showed me a video he took here of a sunset. I've seen a couple other pictures of sunsets here. From what I've seen, this is the best place for a sunset. Unbelievable, incredible place. I wish it was sunset time. So easy enough, you, you come down the hill, Hit the big rock that stuck up in the middle of the trail, hang a left, come down a little bit. West Canada Lake number one, it's a real beautiful site. Plenty of places for tents or hammocks, privy, uh, right on the water. It's real pretty, nice breeze coming in right now. Easy enough to get to. Hopefully this will uh, help somebody out and they won't walk by it and miss it. And... Okay, just up from the lean-to, we are in a little bit of an opening. And it's grassy. And there's a lot of stuff here. And one of the things that is here is another incredibly nice old history spot. This is an old caretaker's cabin where French Louis lived. This is the old foundation. And this was the fireplace. It was actually in the house, I believe, wasn't it, Chris? I think he was going to build a resort or something here, and this is as far as he got. He never never went any farther than the fireplace. I thought this was the foundation, though, wasn't it? That's for the caretaker's cabin. Gotcha. Right over there is the fireplace and French Louis and the caretaker's cabin. And right here is another trail register to sign in on to, in the event of something bad happening, to help everybody else out. Back that way is where we came from. Paseco and whatnot, so we're about 16 and a half miles into uh, a 32 mile trip, so about halfway. And the Northville Placid Trail, you hang a right, and you've got the three Cedar Lake Lean Twos, anywhere between 4.2 and 6.5 miles. Cedar River at 11.2, and the uh, headquarters at 16.2 miles, and that is Wakeley Dam. The Cedar River headquarters is where we are stationed. That's where my vehicle is and we did the drop. So we are halfway through a three day trip and it's about 1230. I don't think you could uh, get any better time than that. <laughs> That's pretty funny actually. We're uh, halfway on the second day, halfway through a 16 or a 32 mile trip. <laughs> Professional hikers. 